Hello, everyone. My name is Victor Monga. I am technical marketing architect for security business unit VMware. Today, we want to talk about DR incident and how you can use NSX. Before we jump into it, uh, Dimitri, why don't we do a quick introduction? Thanks, Victor. My name is uh, Dimitri Mirpolsky. I'm a VCN SE uh, based in Toronto, Canada. Um, I'm happy to work with you, Victor, today and present to you the NSX during incident response with Federation. Awesome. Yeah. And that's the key, Federation. So before exactly. we jump into the exact uh, features and uh, what this demo looks like, let's talk about the, the challenge. During incidents, what happens? We have six stages, preparation, identification, containment, eradication, recovery, and the final is lesson learned. In my opinion, lesson learned should be connected to all the stages. So we want to map where NSX really helps you. We start with the preparation that's where security folks will be focusing on availability of never get security consistency. Then when an incident occurs, that's where you want to contain it. You need to switch from primary to DR site. Then finally, if the primary site is rebuilt, you want to switch it back. Now, all of that, we want to make sure that your networking and security is intact. So during this demo, we will show that we move from site one to site. All the networking and security components stayed intact. Now, during these shows, there's a lot of things happening. What are we going to be talking about during this demo and what's not covered during this demo as well? Absolutely, sure. Uh, for any kind of uh, disaster recovery scenarios, we always have to think of what are we actually recovering? We're recovering compute, we're recovering storage, and obviously we need to take care of the networking and security. So our demo today is specifically focusing on the recovery of the network and security aspects. And this is where we're going to help uh, from NSX to make sure we are doing this as seamless as possible. So we're going to leverage a feature called NSX Federation. And the features are allowing us to do that seamless transition from uh, field side to recovery side without any human interaction, without any admin intervention. We will recover networking and security policies at the recovery site. We're going to use SRM for recovering of the compute, but it's out of scope for this demo. For security folks, what we want you to uh, really understand one thing, that we want to give you the power where you configure your network and security components. And in this diagram where you can see it, you can either use user interface over automated using API. You push that globally on a global NSX manager. That will be actually trickled down to local NSX managers of different sites. Either if the virtual machine is moved from one site to another, or even disaster occurs, you continue using those policies. You continue reusing those network and security components that you have used or created from your policy perspective. Dimitri and I, we came up with this phrase, create once, use many. What that means is you will create it on a global NSX manager and you will continue using it on your local NSX manager. I, I just want to say, let's let's show the, 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 the lab topology so we can exactly describe what are we building in this demo lab. All right, so we have two sites, one Paris and one London, and they separated by 10 millisecond latency between these sites. And we have a work from home employee is going to be acting as our test user. He's going to access the applications that we deploy on this network uh, and this network will consist of distributed routing components uh, tier zero as well as distributed routing components tier one which are global we will push them through the global manager and as victor said in the previous slide it will get disseminated to the local manager on each site thanks to that integration between the global manager and the local managers and sx managers and the application is going to reside on the global uh, segments web segment and the db segment we'll have two web servers residing on a web so and we will make sure that we are advertising routes in the bgp in paris to be more favorable Right, so we will in introduce the AS Pass Prepend feature in BGP on the London site in order to make Paris more favorable to route traffic in and out of this infrastructure. So whenever occurs the failure of the Paris site, the system will automatically choose the London path to be preferred because it's going to be up despite the AS Pass Prepend. It will still be favorable and preferred to get in and out of this infrastructure to serve the application to the employee. That is work from home. I want to take a pause here and uh, just want to make sure that we highlight this for our networking and the vSphere administrator folks, because a lot of times we have seen NSX is being used or configured or consumed by vSphere administrators. So there is no black magic or behind the scenes recipe that NSX is using here. It's literally networking 101. We're using BGP 
to advertise routes from both sides, but we are preparing it for London so that the Paris side route is preferred. There's nothing to do with NSX here. So, and the next step would be ensure that not only networking is being configured here in the routes, but also a security policy, right? So we'll use here a simple example, HTTPS versus HTTP, which gonna be set in our policy to be allowed HTTPS and HTTP will be denied. So whenever the user trying to access web one or web two, you will be able to see only HTTPS web page and not HTTP as per our policy. In the next slide, we will show that how if a virtual machine is vMotion, there's no disaster. You just try to utilize your compute in London as well. So if a virtual machine is moved from Paris to London, a user can still access that via same process but at that point, it's seamless and transparent for a user where the actual workload is played. But the conversation of this topic today is disaster. What happens when a disaster occurs? Right. So when disaster occurs in the Paris site, we have assumed that we've lost every single object from an NSX perspective. We've lost the tier zero router. We've lost tier one router. We've lost the web segments. Every single aspect of DNSX is being lost at the Paris site. Thanks to that distributed routing architecture of the NSX and Federation, we have these objects, tier zero and tier ones stretched across and they are appear on the London site as well. So NSX detects that the failure occurred at the Paris primary site and will initiate immediately or instantiate rather these objects. And once the compute has been recovered at the London site, it will be automatically attached to NSX segments, web and DB segments, and the traffic will just flow without any human intervention. I think this is a key point here that NSX allows for that to happen and preserves um, the security policy that is being attached to the VMs. We're using uh, security grouping constructs that are provisioned through the global manager. And we're saying that each VM that starts with web will have group to the uh, attached to the web group and DB VMs that start with the DB name, they will be attached to the DB group. And that's how this grouping exists on the Paris site. And when the Paris fails, it exists in the London site and security and networking stays intact. Oh, but the slides are good and well. What about hands-on learning, man? I, I only can understand all of these concepts if I get to actually do it. Are there any options? that I, I can actually explore them and learn these, what we have talked about in slides. Absolutely, absolutely. There are two options. In fact, an SBU built incredibly good demos. There are actually four of them, day zero, day one, day two, and day end demos that you can take them and, and explore one by one at each stage of these um, um, demos whether you have you know no configuration or you have full fully configured infrastructure and you can play with it and execute the DR scenarios or the motion scenarios. The second option is you can build this demo yourself. We have taken this one cloud and SBU demo, golden demo, and we modified it a little bit. So you now have an, an option to take the demo and build the, the entire NSX infrastructure for Paris and London site by executing Python automation scripts that has been built by an SBU. And then you can do uh, the provisioning of the, rather the configuration and registration of the local managers to the site of the uh, global manager. So do the site registration. And then you can execute another script, which is written in Terraform that will create all the constructs that we've discussed, tier zero, tier one, web segment, security groups, BGP, redistribution, everything is done in that Terraform script. So you can build it to achieve your day one, day two configurations. And then you can you know, attach the VMs to the NSX groups and execute those scenarios, execute the motion scenario and execute your DR uh, testing scenario. Victor, let's take a look at the lab topology and how, how it is achieved. Uh, so here we are showing that uh, once you get a hands-on your uh, OneCloud V app, this is what Parasite is going to look like. If you have ever used uh, any of uh, the previous uh, demo, you'll see pretty much the same thing. You have a VPod router, which simulate your physical networking. You have a vCenter. Control center is what we call a jump box or landing pad where you'll be able to do RDP and you'll be able to see all of that. You have two ESXIs in management cluster, you have two ESXIs in compute, and then the same thing happens in London as well. Yes, yeah, so a London site, if you remember, our London site is our recovery site. So it doesn't uh, have 
the these uh, workloads, the web and, and DB workloads. So, well, it has the SRM uh, virtual appliance and, and this for replication virtual appliance. They work together to make sure that we are replicating workloads web 01 and DB01 from Paris to London. So whenever we execute the DR uh, use case, we can bring those workloads back, right? And they will attach uh, automatically to the NSX, right? So um, that's, you know, uh, the Paris and London side configurations. And now in terms of the topology that will be built by, um, you know, Python and Terraform scripts, that, that's how eventually the end, end state of the lab will look like. So you'll have edge nodes for each site configured with their interfaces and VLAN attached segments uh, with VLAN 240, 250, 243, 253, et cetera. You will have um, the location active Paris location standby. London with their respective edge nodes. You will have stretch tier zero, you will have stretch tier one, you have stretched web and DB segments, and essentially you will connect the uh, VMs to those segments. All right, let's walk the talk. Let's jump right into the demo. We, we begin with the blank configuration in both Paris and London location. As you can see from the screen, there are no objects exist. We are running Python script to build the configuration lab uh, in Paris, as well as the configuration lab in London. And the script will run and configure compute manager, will compute transport zones, uh, transport nodes, all necessary objects as, such as the pools, tap pools, RTAP pools with the respective uh, subnet and ranges in those. Uh, as it continues to run, we can see that the pools have been configured, but now we're waiting for process to finish configuring transport zone and transport nodes. Right now, some of these objects have been configured and, and ready, but edges are still being done. And just takes about 25 minutes or so to finish the script. As it's done, uh, you will see both um, the host nodes as well as the edge uh, nodes have been configured. They have uh, success status and the edges have been added to the cluster. So now, if we've done that uh, configuration, our next step is to configure our locations. But first, we start by adding the standby global manager in the configuration inside the global manager in Paris. So we're adding the global um, manager London with its FQDN username and password, as well as the thumbprint. Uh, as we click Save, this uh, global manager has now been added. And the next step would be to add both locations. Paris as well as London. So we're adding same um, same parameters, the name, FQDN, username, password, and a thumbprint. The thumbprint can be uh, uh, grabbed from the appliance page in each of the local manager appliances um, uh, pages. So now we've added um, both of, of these uh, locations and the next step will be to configure our networking. The RTAP configuration is done by invoking this uh, wizard and where we configuring respective RTAP VLAN IDs, uh, and attaching DDS uh, switches and uh, uh, attaching respective RTAP IP pools. And now since we've added uh, those items, we can check the configuration the status uh, under the edge cluster and we can see that uh, all tunnels are coming up. Our next step would be to start configuring our global objects. As you can see right now in the networking panel, there are no objects for tier 0, tier 1 and segments. They're all zeros. And same thing for a global configuration of distributed firewall. No objects here either. So we will start configuring those by executing um, the Terraform script. We'll run Terraform apply, which takes just a, a couple of minutes. It will build the configuration and it will push it to the global manager. Um, and uh, this will build uh, the configuration for the networking and security objects uh, within the global manager, which will get propagated down to the uh, uh, local manager. So as you can see, the, from the security point of view, we already have the policies configured under the application and infrastructure. And under networking view, you can see that we have uh, now gateways, tier 1s, tier 0s, as well as the segments. So let's let's look closer at the tier 0 gateway. You can see in the interfaces we have two, two in Paris and two in London, they all uh, coming up and they attach to respective edges, as well as the MBGP configuration is there. We have 
peers configured and, and their uh, respective configuration of the AS numbers as well as the uh, um, uh, prefixes route filters are there for um, uh, making sure that uh, ra ra traffic is routed through Paris location and the route is advertised as necessary. So here's the attachment of the tier one router to the tier zero and if, if we look closer to the tier one router we can see we're advertising connected segments so we can redistribute them through tier zero and these segments are web and db attached to the tier one so we can now see them here in the web uh, in the segment page so both segments are uh, up and running and we can see that also in a network topology diagram so what now we have to do is attach the vms that are currently not on the nsx segments as you can see db web uh, one and web two attached to the labnet segment so we're going to run powershell script to attach those vms to nsx respective segments this just takes a couple of seconds and now we can see web1, web2 and db are attached to respective web and db segments and now we can um, connect our application uh, uh, to your application web1 as well as the Twitter application through web2 web servers and now we can see the web2 is also measuring the latency let's start with the uh, our test of the vmotion scenario in the vmotion scenario we're going to move web02 from <coughs> paris to London. At the same time, we're going to measure the ping uh, loss and we will observe uh, uh, one loss of the ping uh, during this scenario. And as you can see, the latency also increased because now we have moved uh, Web02 to a different location. Trace route also shows us that uh, configuration now is being routed through London. Now, to continue our uh, testing for the DR scenario, we have to configure um, these networking segments in the SRM. So we're provisioning web and DB segments to the configuration of the network mappings in the SRM. And now um, we've checked that we have recovery plans and protection groups configured in the SRM. And we can now execute uh, the uh, failure scenario as, as we uh, brought down the network uh, in, in the site A. We, can, we now can connect to the site B SRM and uh, as we observe that connection to the site um, A is down that's why we see all those errors in, in the site recovery manager we have uh, access the recovery plan and, and in that page in the recovery plan page we can execute our recovery plan meaning we can bring up the, uh, um, the compute the recover compute through the uh, disaster recovery execution and this will uh, will uh, recover the web uh, uh, one and DB one in London. As you can see, those VMs have been recovered, and they've been attached to their respective uh, segments. You can observe all these steps uh, in the SRM uh, recovery steps uh, screen. As it finishes, we will have access to our application from uh, London site. Now the recovery is complete, DB segment attached, uh, DB, web, uh, DB and web VMs are attached to their respective segments. And um, we, we can uh, check uh, the health of our application. As we reload the page, we can see it's still healthy and still access both uh, uh, um, web one and as well as the uh, web two. And we can confirm that also from a trace route. We, we're going to check the security uh, settings uh, that there are policies that are configured such that uh, web group uh, um, is defined as a tag as well as the name of the VM matching web and the uh, DB group is defined such that uh, DB tag exists and, and the DB name uh, begins with the, uh, at the VM level. Uh, we would quickly check to uh, reject the communication between the web and DB and run the uh, page refresh again to see the communication now has been uh, broken between the web and, and the DB. Um, and we, we check that against the, both of these servers. And to revert it back, we just um, allow that communication and quickly checking that we reload the page and we have access to um, uh, from web to, to the DB. Uh, the next test is to see that HTTPS traffic is allowed while HTTP traffic is not. So we have defined a policy that is uh, permitting only HTTPS traffic and you can see and observe that uh, in a distributed firewall rule page. Now 
we going back to the uh, uh, recovery. Um, so we we will uh, restore communication and we will recover the VMs uh, back uh, into the Paris location. So this these steps will run um, depending on the uh, performance of the of the storage and basically it finishes the recovery of the VMs, reprotection of of the VMs and bring them. Uh, from London location back to Paris location. So now we see that BAP01 and DB are now back at Paris uh, and we can log in back to um, uh, vCenter in Paris. The next uh, uh, few minutes you'll see how to clean up the um, pod optionally. So we'll move the VMs back to a LabNet uh, segment instead of the NSX segments. Once those VMs are out of the NSX, we can start uh, executing Terraform destroy script, which will, uh, in intelligent order, delete all the objects that has been created uh, using Terraform apply. And and this is it. Now the the lab is is been deleted from uh, the NSX uh, configuration uh, perspective. You have still locations in the and the and the global managers, and and those can be also deleted. Um, and the uh, Python script can be run as well to uh, completely delete all the NSX uh, uh, local objects, the transport nodes, configuration, the tab pools, R tab pools, and everything. Pretty much bring it back to state uh, zero. As you can see, those objects are now being uh, removed and deleted. Edge cluster is being deleted, edge nodes and, and hosts and everything is, um, is now wiped out completely.